Fujifilm's Pixel Shift Multi-Shot, a marketing gimmick or an amazing utility to help you get better photos. This was the topic of last week's live webinar that I did for our Fujifilm photographer member group, but it's something that I don't want to just live behind a paywall because I think it's important that if you're considering upgrading to a new camera solely for pixel shift multi-shot, or if it's a deciding factor, you really need to know more about it. I'd hate for you to upgrade to a new camera for this feature, only to find that you can't use it at all. So we'll take a look at that here, and if you want to watch that whole webinar, as well as all of our past webinars, you can see those recordings and all other member benefits at photocourses.link slash Fuji members and use the coupon code tube20 for 20% off your first three months after a free three-day trial. Pixel Shift Multi-Shot is found in the GFX 100S and 50S2, the X-T5 and the X-H2, and it uses the camera's in-body stabilization to shift the sensor around while it captures a series of raw photos, 16 for the GFX cameras, and 20 photos for the X-series cameras. Now, why do this? What's the advantage? Well, you can combine these raw photos in a free software later on and get a final image in DNG format with more accurate color and the option for higher resolution. In the 40 megapixel X-T5 and X-H2, you can get a 160 megapixel image, a 200 megapixel image in the GFX 50S2, and a 400 megapixel image out of the GFX 100S. Now, that's a lot of pixels, but the feature that I was most excited about was the ability to get real color instead of interpolated color. I cover this in depth in that webinar that I mentioned earlier, and you'll find a link for that here. Long story short, each pixel in your camera only records either red, green, or blue. The other two color channels for each pixel are interpolated based on the values of the surrounding pixels. So the colors in your photos are actually just guessed, but they're pretty darn close, right? Pixel Shift Multishot builds a picture that contains the actual RGB values for each pixel in your final image. Since the sensor is moving around, light from your scene will pass through each one of those red, green, and blue color filters. So what's this high resolution and accurate color good for? Before you get all excited and say, all of my photos, you'll want to keep watching because this feature is certainly not practical for all of your photos. The high resolution can help in printing massive wall size prints or high-end commercial work where you need all the resolution that you can get. And it's also good for macro photography. And then accurate color can also be critical for high-end commercial photography and also for archival work, photographing art. And the combination of high resolution and accurate color can increase the overall texture and detail in your photo though it's perceptually minimal. All of this cool stuff comes at a cost though. First, there's the storage requirements. To create a single 160 megapixel image, you need 20 raw files at about 50 megabytes each. So that's one gigabytes of raw photos just to create one high resolution image and that resulting photo will also be just shy of one gig. So now you're up to two gig per photo. If you're creating a 400 megapixel image with the GFX 100S, now your storage requirement is about five gig per photo. Digital storage is cheap, but you better be able to justify that because it is gonna add up fast. The main limitation, however, is movement. There cannot be anything moving in your scene. If you're photographing a landscape, there can't be so much as a breath of wind this first photo was from a fairly windy day. Take a look at the artifacts around the trees, which is the result of combining several raw files captured while those trees were blowing in the wind. You're not photoshopping this away. Now here's just an ever so slight breeze and look what's happening with this one piece of grass. Also something that you're not gonna clean up in Photoshop, at least not easily. Your camera, 
can't move either, not even by the fraction of a width of a human hair. You better have a rock solid tripod with again, no wind. Even using a good tripod photographing this stone wall, there was enough wind to just slightly buffet the camera during the sequence, resulting in artifacts throughout the photo. Even water is susceptible to artifacts, though you may think the water is still, you're gonna see these. Can you see these artifacts when zoomed out, viewing the image to fit on a computer screen? No, so maybe it doesn't matter. But then what's the whole point of doing all of this if you're not gonna get the benefits of it? Thankfully, if you do encounter these artifacts when combining images, you'll still have the raw files to work with. And I mean, a single raw file isn't that bad, is it? So if you're ready to try it out, here's how to set up Pixel Shift Multishot. You'll find the Pixel Shift Multishot submenu at the end of the shooting setting menu in the X-T5. In the X-H2 and GFX cameras, press the drive button and then go to the end of the list. You'll set an interval between every photo and you should always set shortest for the interval unless you're using a flash. In that case, set the interval so your flash has time to cycle between each photo. The camera does change some things when pixel shift multi-shot is enabled. The file type will be set to raw lossless compressed, no JPEGs are captured. ISO will be limited to 1600 max. The shutter type will be set to electronic shutter. And if you're in continuous autofocus mode, it'll be set to single shot autofocus. And then image stabilization, of course, will also be disabled. Then you'll see the multi-shot icon on the screen to let you know that you're in this mode. I would recommend setting a 10, not two, but a 10 second timer to dampen all vibration from pressing the shutter. Or better yet, use a wireless trigger if you can. When capturing the sequence, the camera shows which photo it's capturing and it'll let you know when the sequence is complete. I put all images from a single sequence into their own folder. This just keeps them organized so you know which photos belong to which sequence. And I also store that final file here. You can download and open the Fujifilm Pixel Shift Combiner software. It's free and you'll find a link for that in the description if you need it. Then just click on the register jobs button to open up a sequence. Select a single raw file from the sequence. You only need to select one and the software is gonna determine which other photos belong to that sequence. Then choose either high resolution and accurate color or just accurate color for the combining type. Accurate color only keeps the resolution the same as the source file but it has that real color information. That job will then appear in the list along with an icon indicating whether it's accurate color or also high resolution. You can load multiple jobs into the queue. It can take a while to do this whole process. So you can load up a bunch, click run, and it'll start combining. The software will warn you if it detects any defects, that message looks like this. But even if no defects were detected, you wanna click on check result to open up a loop and do some spot checks. I have found defects in those images when the software didn't. So just a heads up on that. That processed DNG image will be in the location specified towards the bottom of the program. I hate to sound all pessimistic about this. This feature has a lot of potential. I just don't think that it's implemented very well here. It takes a lot of care and also a lot of luck to get a workable image and under limited circumstances as well. Landscape photographers were super excited when this feature was announced, but landscape photography is probably one of the worst places to use this feature with that risk for artifacting. If you want to create a massive print, just save yourself the headache and use AI powered upscaling software that can create better results from a single raw file in a fraction of the time. And you can have all the movement that you want in that photo. Adobe and Topaz Labs, for example, are two options for that. But what about that accurate color? 
One of the things that sets Fujifilm cameras apart is their color science. It's cool to know that you can get real colors using multi-shot, but what's wrong with the interpolated colors that we've been using all along? Here's a comparison of one of my dad's paintings combined using the accurate color option and a single raw file. This is a use case for multi-shot for archiving art. You may not be able to see any differences after video compression. There were some slight differences in the greens and the blues were just a touch more vibrant. There's really not a lot of difference in the texture or detail though. 20 raw files is just a bit excessive for such small gains here, at least in my opinion. But then again, I'm not doing any work for the National Archives. For those specialty photographers and high-end commercial and product photographers and macro photographers, this feature could be valuable to you to more accurately capture high-resolution photos if you think that those gains are worth the cost and in the difficulty. For the rest of us, though, keep on with the status quo and focus your efforts on creativity and storytelling. If you've used Pixel Shift Multishot and have some thoughts on it, let us know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.